great. All right. So I want to really commend all of you for, for jumping on tonight and uh, just taking the time to pursue God and to pursue what belongs to you and healing belongs to you. And, and so I want to just commend you guys for jumping on, uh, making it a point to, 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 to prioritize uh, the things of God. And, and I know God is going to meet you. There's something about expectation that, that, uh, that causes you to receive. So let me start by saying this tonight's healing school. And I know it was very spontaneous, but tonight's healing school is going to specifically focus on eyesight. We'll do some other things uh, once we get past this, but eyesight is where we're going to focus on tonight primarily. Um, and, and, you know, eyesight for me is it's, it's a, it's a very um, sensitive area in our home because my daughter, I had to have glasses when she was, um, I don't remember how old Ella was, maybe maybe three or four, yeah. But she had to have glasses when she was very young um, because of one of her eyes. And uh, not, you know, she could see and everything, but it was just a far-sighted situation. Well, I hate sickness, and and I don't want my daughter to have to have that. So we created a list of healing scriptures that we used for her. And uh, the doctor that we had in New Jersey, they 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 charted. This is medical now. This these aren't um, you know exaggerations, but they charted uh, the progression of her eyes. So we have a new doctor down here now who basically wiped all of that out. And he's starting fresh, but we know that we're healed. And so um, God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to have perfect eyesight. And I did not realize, I'll just be honest with you, I never had vision problems in my life. Um, so I did not realize how much the Bible had to say about eyesight. I had no clue that the Bible had so many things, so many promises um, regarding eyesight until we had to use our faith for it. Well, now we want to help all of you. And so no matter where you are, whether you're you know, your, your, uh, your eyesight is severely damaged, um, whether it's just minor or whether you're just trying to receive for someone else, it is, you know, God is going to meet you. You don't have to wear glasses. That's not God's will. You know, I tell people all the time, I say, you know, people, they, they, uh, you know, uh, they go and they, I don't know if this is still a style anymore, but I remember that it was a style when people would go and buy frames. They didn't even need glasses, but they would go and buy frames um, to make it look like they needed glasses because it was fashionable to look to wear glasses. Maybe five years ago. Does anybody remember that? Or is that just me? I, but I remember that people would they would go and get glasses and they would it would just be pure glass. Still a style. Jeff Chandler says still a style. Well, Jeff, you're old. Everybody else is looking at me like nobody ever did that. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, um, I remember people going and buying frames just to look like they needed glasses, and it was just clear glass in there. Um, but, um, folks, listen to me. You shouldn't glorify wearing glasses any more than you would glorify being in a wheelchair. You know, people come to my daughter all the time. Now, I'm going to say some. All right, let me just say this from off the bat. Some of you aren't familiar with me. Some of you are. I believe the Bible. And so I may come off a little strong, but it's because I believe the standard of God's word. And so I'm going to show you everything I'm saying in the Bible. And I just want you to open up and receive. But I'll say this. Uh, my daughter uh, when she first got glasses, I trained her that if people came up to her and said that, hey, I like your glasses, I trained her not to respond <laughs> because I never wanted her to be comfortable wearing glasses. I never wanted her to feel like that was OK. Any more than you would see a child in a wheelchair, none of you would go to a child in a wheelchair or on crutches or um, on a ventilator or um you know, any any other, you know, problem, no one would go to that child 
you know, if a child had cancer and they were wearing something to cover their head, no one would go to that child and say, oh, I like your wheelchair or the thing covering your head or, 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 you know, no one would do that. But yet with glasses, you do it. And the Bible, it's actually an aid. God did not intend for your eyesight to be anything less than 2020. Just like he created your legs to walk. If someone uses a wheelchair, you wouldn't go to them and say, oh, that wheelchair is stylish. I like your wheelchair. You would just simply, you know, pray for that person and, and, and try to encourage them. Well, you should have the same attitude toward your eyesight. God never intended for you to need any aid to see, just like he never intended you to need an aid to walk. And so you need to, uh, 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 Trudy is t uh, texting me, uh, Miss Olive, I don't know if you're on here or not, but Trudy is texting me and I emailed her, so I don't know what's going on. But um, hold on, guys, forgive me. But nobody uh, should should you should you don't need to tolerate these things. So uh, I have a list of healing scriptures that we're going to go through, but none of that's going to make sense to you. And you're not going to understand what we're doing unless I take you through this progressive step. Now, there are some of you who, it, you know, I'm dealing with a very broad group of people and I don't know everything that you believe, nor do I know your background or what you've been taught. And so there are many Christians who don't know how to receive from God. They just don't. And it, it doesn't mean they're bad. It doesn't mean that they don't love God. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is there are many Christians who do not know how to receive from God. And so, and that's for many reasons. A lot of times it's bad teaching. It's, it's many things that we don't have time to discuss today. But today, what I'm going to do is just deal with a couple of points. Like I said, we only have until about 9, 9, 15, but we're going to deal with a couple of points. And the remainder of our time, once we get done with that, we'll go through these eyesight scriptures. I have um, a list of them here. Uh, so we'll go through them. And I'll also try to email this to you guys afterwards. But we'll go through these eyesight scriptures. And then we'll, whatever we don't cover today, I want to do this consistently with you until you start to get a result because you have to be consistent. Uh, there's a story in the Bible of a man who came to Jesus and he couldn't see and Jesus prayed for him. And then he told the man, do you see? And the man said, I, I can't. He said, I see men that look like trees. So he could see, but it wasn't clear. He didn't have clear vision. Many of you are in that position right now. You don't have clear vision. You need assistance to see clearly. Notice, notice Jesus did not stop at the man. What's up? Jesus did not stop. All of you guys need to mute your phones, please. Jesus did not stop with, he, he didn't just accept the man you know, he, the man said, hey, I can see, but it looks like trees. So he had some degree of vision, but it wasn't clear vision. Jesus didn't say, oh, that's good enough. Let's just go down to lens crafters and get you some glasses made and, and praise God for it. He didn't say that. He said, come back here again. He laid his hands on him again. And the Bible says, he said, do you see now? Jesus asked him, can you see? And the man said, I see every man watch this clearly clearly that what is the will of god clear eyesight that you can see clearly and listen to me folks jesus will not quit until you until everyone nor will nor will i nor should you quit until every one of you watch this can see clearly amen that's God's will, and that has to be your mindset, okay? And so what we're going to do tonight is I'm just going to lay a foundation. We'll try to get to a few scriptures if we have time, but then I'll pick up. Uh, we have a service tomorrow night and then a service Wednesday night, so I can't do this again. But Thursday, we'll, we'll jump back on again at 8. I'll send it back out to you, and we won't do any of this preliminary 
we'll go right into the healing scriptures. But if I don't give you a foundation of what I'm doing when we use these healing scriptures, you won't know how you won't know what you're doing and the power won't release itself. It'll just be to you like a list. You don't even know what to do with it. You don't know how to handle it. And so it'll hurt. It, it won't benefit you. So that's what we want to do tonight. So we have we have four points that we want to cover tonight. So the first one is this. God's will, if, and I would encourage you to take notes if, if you can. Write these things down and write the verses down that we're getting ready to give you. Okay, so it's 827. Let's try to finish this in 30 minutes, and then we'll have 15 minutes to do some scriptures. Okay, number one, God's will is for every person to be healed. And for some of you, that's basic. You know that. But there are some people who do not know that. They believe that, that God makes some people sick to teach them a lesson or that God uses sickness to teach you a lesson or, you know, that, that, hey, this is just your lot in life and God is using this for some redemptive purpose. That's not true. That is an absolute lie. And if you believe that, you will stay uh, sick or with vision problems. God's will is for every person to be healed. First Peter chapter two, verse 24 tells us very clearly, I want you to put your eyes Every single verse that I'm calling out, some of you are in the car. I know you're driving, you're at work. You can't do this. That's fine. I understand. I'm recording this. I can email it to you. That's fine. But for those of you who are able to put your eyes on the verses of scripture, you need to do that. That is a necessary part of receiving from God. Okay. You need to look at it. All right. Now watch this. First Peter chapter two. And look at verse 24. We're dealing with the first point. God's will is for every person to be healed, period. Whether it's vision, headache, cancer, di uh, uh, ALS, uh, yellow fever, I don't care what it is. God's will, allergies, anything. God's will is for every person to be completely 100% healed. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Notice what he says. Who his own self, referring to Jesus, bore our sins in his own body on the cross so that we could be dead to sin, alive to righteousness. Now, why did he do all that he did on the cross? Why? Look at this. By his stripes, you were healed. So Jesus went to the cross and bore your sins so that you could be healed. All right, now listen to me very carefully. We are healed because Jesus bore our sins on the cross. Now, remember the point we're making. It's the will of God for every person to be healed. Now, notice what this says. Jesus bore our sins on the cross. And because he bore our sins on the cross, we are healed. In other words, if he did not bear our sins, we couldn't be healed. Now, here's my next question. Whose sins? did Jesus bear on the cross? Whose sins did Jesus bear on the cross? Because if, if he didn't bear our sins, we couldn't be healed. So whose sins did he bear on the cross? Listen to me, the whole world. The whole world, John chapter one, verse 29. Put your eyes on these verses, please. John chapter one and verse 29. Look at what he says. John 1 and verse 29, he says, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming to him and saith, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away, what? The sin of the world. What did 1 Peter 2.24 say? When he bore the sins, when he, when he carried our sins, we now can be healed. In other words, if he never carried your sins away, you couldn't be healed. But since he has carried your sins away, you can be healed. Whose sins did he carry away? Listen to me, the world. Therefore, it is the will of God for every person, the entire world, to be healed. Did everybody follow that logic? That's very important. Does everybody see that? 
If Jesus didn't bear our sins, we couldn't be healed. But since he has borne our sins, we are healed. Well, whose sins did he bear? The whole world. Therefore, it is the will of God for every person to be completely and totally healed, to never get sick. That's God's will. Okay, now, second point. Why then isn't everyone healed? Why then isn't everyone healed? If it's God's will for everyone to be healed, why then isn't everyone healed? Very simple. Because not everyone will believe and receive their healing. That's the answer. It's not because of God's sovereignty and he wills for some to be sick and some to be, that has nothing to do with it. God's will is for every person to be healed. Why then isn't everyone healed? Very simple. Because not everyone will believe and receive their healing. This is very simple now. Listen to me, folks. I'm going to ask you a question, and I, it's, it's rhetorical, but I want you to think. Is it God's will for everyone to be forgiven of their sins? Of course. But not everyone has received the forgiveness of their sins. The Bible tells us very clearly that God is not willing for any person to perish. First Timothy, he doesn't want anyone to go without their sins being forgiven. Jesus died to take away the sin of the whole world. But yet Jesus said the road to hell is broad and many people there are who won't receive the forgiveness of sins. Now, listen to me, folks. You would never see a person you would never see a person who rejected Jesus and failed to receive the forgiveness of their sins. You would never see that person and say, God, why haven't you provided salvation for that man? You would always put the onus on the individual for not believing and receiving, correct? You would never look at God and say, God, why did you not provide salvation? You would never say that because you've been taught and you know that God so loved the world that he sent his only son. But what do we have to do? We have to believe that whosoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so just as forgiveness of sins has to be received by faith, remember, Healing is the result of your sins being forgiven. 1 Peter 2, 24. He bore our sins, now we're healed. How did you receive forgiveness of your sins? You believed what Jesus did on the cross and you received forgiveness. The same way you received your sins forgiven, God didn't make you get saved. God didn't make you believe on Jesus. He provided it, you had to believe it. It's the same with your healing. If you're not healed, listen to me, this is gonna sound a little harsh, but I'm not trying to be harsh. I just don't know how else to communicate except directly. I'm a straight shooter. Listen to me, if you are not healed, it's your own fault. It's not God. God, when I say fault in the sense of responsibility, it's up to you to receive it. God has already provided it. You have to receive it. Okay, does, does everybody understand that? Just like God provided salvation before you ever got here, Jesus died on the cross. None of you were born 2,000 years ago. Jesus provided salvation 2,000 years ago. None of you were born. So before you ever got here, he had already provided forgiveness of sins. But you one day heard, believed, and received it. You have to do the same thing with healing. Everything in the kingdom of God is received by faith. It's not earned. It's not deserved. It's received by faith. God provides, that's grace. 
You receive. That's your part. That's faith. He's not going to do that for you. You have to receive by believing. Okay. So I'm going to say it again. If you're sick, God is not the one responsible. You have to settle that because if you think that you're waiting on God, I can't tell you the number of people that I have dealt with. And, and Annie knows, I mean, she's, Annie and I have been together since we're in high school. I've worked for two of the largest ministries in, the, in America. I cannot tell you. And one of them, I was the director of member care. So all I did was deal with all the members of the church. I cannot tell you the, the, the number of Christians who have communicated to me in some form or fashion that they are waiting on God to heal them. Folks, listen to me. If you have that mentality, you will die of a sickness or a disease. Your eyes will never get healed. Now, we're not dealing with terminal sicknesses here. We're dealing with eyesight, but it goes even all the way to terminal things. If you think that you are waiting on God, you will die with that sickness. You are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. You're not waiting on God for your healing any more than you're waiting on God to forgive you of your sins. He's already forgiven you. You're not waiting on God to forgive your sins. You now have to receive what he did. You're not waiting on God to heal you. By his stripes, you were, past tense, it's done. It, your healing is all packaged up with your name on it. It belongs to you. He's waiting on you to receive. Just like you receive salvation, you now have to receive your healing. Same, it's the same process. All right, now, why then isn't everyone healed? Because not everybody will believe and receive, okay? Now, healing, like everything else, is received by faith. It's received by faith, just like your forgiveness of sins was. Now, if faith is how we receive from God, how do you get faith? Now, many of you know this. How do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's why we're going to take these verses. It's like 30 of them. We're going to take them, and we're going to read them and say them together. And I'll explain to you why we're going to do that. Just, just track with me, please, for now. But faith. Um, is how you receive from God. So how do you get faith? By hearing. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, not by praying for it. By hearing. Faith comes by hearing. You've got to take time to get into the word and hear. And if you'll take time and get into the word and hear, then faith will come and you'll be able to receive from God. Now, I want to say this because this is also important that I cover this. Uh, many Christians believe, many Christians believe that Jesus just went around healing people. Now, you may never verbalize that, I understand. But you, whether you realize it or not, you've been trained to believe that that Jesus was just so magnificent that he went around. Now, he is magnificent, but Jesus was did not. He emptied himself. Man, I'm saying a lot here. But Jesus functioned on earth as a man anointed with the Spirit of God. Okay? He, he can, he, let me say this. Jesus didn't go around and just, you know, you know just wave his hand and everybody got healed. That's not how it happened. I'm going to prove this to you. Many Christians believe that Jesus just went around healing people. That's not true. You know, that's the whole sovereignty thing. Well, if God wanted to heal me, he could. Why did God let my situation turn out this way? Why did God let my child be born this way? Why did God let this happen? That's not, God didn't let anything happen. You're letting it happen. Now, I know I just said a mouthful there, but I'm going to show you. It's not, God, it's not up to God. You have the authority. OK, and so many Christians believe that Jesus just went around healing people. That's not true. All right, let's prove it to you. Even in Jesus earthly ministry, well, I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. Jesus, people were healed under Jesus ministry as they were able to believe and receive from him. 
I'm going to say it again. People, people were healed under Jesus' ministry. He didn't just walk around and, you know, boom, people just got healed. No. People were healed under Jesus' ministry. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen God. People were healed under Jesus' ministry, listen to me, as they were able to receive from him by faith. Let me prove it to you. Go with me to Luke 5. I want you to definitely look at this. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'm going to show you two instances in the book of Luke because in the mouth of two, every doctrine has to be established. You can't just use one. Luke chapter 5, look at verse 15. But so much the more went the fame abroad of him, referring to Jesus. And great multitudes came together, watch this church, to hear and be healed. What did they come to get first? They came to hear the word. Now, I have a question, and I want everyone, well, I probably can't make all of you answer, but I'm going to ask you this question. Why were they coming to hear? Okay, what can I get one person to answer me? What? Great job, Lisa, I see you. Why were they coming to hear first? Anybody answer me? Just one person. I want one person to say it from the group. Faith comes by hearing. Good job. Is that you, Ireland? No, that's Trudy. Oh, that's you, Trudy. Okay, great job. Jeff, I see. Okay, so notice. Notice now. Notice because this is important. People have this concept of Jesus that is completely wrong. The Bible says that they came to him, look, to hear first. He was teaching. How does faith come? By hearing. How do we receive from God? By faith. Listen to me. Where there was no faith, even under Jesus' ministry, there was no healing. I'm going to show it to you. So they came to hear and to be healed. Guess what you guys are doing tonight? The exact same model. Of, of scripture. Guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to be healed. They, you're coming to hear him. And you now will be healed by him of whatever your infirmities are. Amen? Amen. Now, let me show you one more verse. Go to chapter 6. Chapter 6 of Luke. Look at verse 17. Luke chapter 6, verse 17. This is just one more proof text to show you that Jesus didn't walk around and just wave his hand on people and they everybody just got healed. That's not what happened. He taught the word to them. They had to hear it first. Why did they have to hear it? They had to get faith. Nothing comes from heaven without faith. You have to have faith. How do you get it? By hearing. Hearing. The greatest thing you can do is hear the word. Now watch this, verse 17. And he came down with them, referring to Jesus, and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem. And from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, look at this church, which came to hear him. and to be healed of their diseases. Notice, they were not healed until they heard. Faith had to come. Then they could receive. Where there is no faith, even under Jesus' ministry, there were no mighty works of healing. Let me prove it to you. Yeah, healing is a subsequent action. Let me prove it to you. Uh, Matthew 15, let me show it to you. Where there is no faith. See, you're doing, you're doing the biblical order tonight. You're coming to hear, you'll be healed. Where there is no faith, even under Jesus' ministry. Most Christians don't believe this. 
They believe, no, these people didn't do anything. He just healed them. That's not true. They had to receive. Let me prove it to you. Look at this. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. If you want to be healed today, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you want to be healed, he wants to heal you, but you have to hear, have faith, and receive it. It's not up to him. You have to receive. Okay? Matthew 13, watch this, verse 53. Let's show you that where there was no faith, there was no mighty works of healing. Matthew 13, verse 53. Matthew 13, verse 53. Watch this. And it came to pass that when Jesus, now I want you to pay attention here, okay, please. We're going to make a couple of points from this. And, and this is uh, basically our last point. Now watch this. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them. So they're hearing. He taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished. And they said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And is his brethren, and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? We know the whole family. Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. Now watch, but Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now look, now here's what dispels so many disbelief, so many uh, sacred cows, Christians, they think Jesus just, just, you know, blew on you. No, you had to believe. Some of you think that if Jesus were to appear in your house right now, he'd just instantly take away all your problems. Not so, if you can't believe if you can't see them and you don't get the, the same results you get now will be the same results as if he were physically there. Now watch, I prove it. Verse 58. And he did not many mighty works there. Why? Why couldn't he work mightily among that people? Why? What does the Bible say? Because of their unbelief. Their unbelief hindered him. Your unbelief today will hinder the mighty working power of God in your life today. It'll still do the same thing. Now, I want to say something here. Notice this. I'm going to say a point here. Listen to me. The greatest hindrance to your faith is offense. The, that's Satan's, man, that is Satan's linchpin. The greatest hindrance to your faith is offense. Notice. They heard the word, and yet faith never came. Is Romans 10, 17 true? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God? Sure it is. But there is no truth in the Bible that stands independent of another truth. What Romans 10, 17 is actually saying is simply this. The potential for faith comes. Faith comes. Faith is knocking at the door when you hear the word, but you still have to receive. Now, let me say this to you. What Satan does to people, because see, he can't necessarily keep you from going to church. He already knows you're going to go and listen. But what he'll do to you is offend you, make you feel offended. So even though you're hearing the word, even though you're getting the word, you're hearing it, faith still isn't coming because of offense. 
Another verse of scripture to prove this, I didn't write this in my notes, but another verse is found in Hebrews chapter four. You don't have to turn there, but it says, it says, uh, you know what? Let's go look at that. And we'll come back to Matthew 13. And this is very important that you need to put your eyes on this. Hebrews chapter four, don't ever, ever play with offense ever. Not for, not listen to me. I know we use this term lightly, but I mean it not for one split second. Don't ever play. If you want to stop the power of God in your life, have something to do with offense. You will, you will instantly cut off the power of God. Notice Jesus could not do anything. No mighty work. He could not work in their life because they were offended. They were hearing the word. He was teaching them. Can you imagine going to a service and Jesus is the pastor? You, you think, oh, everybody would be out of debt. Everybody would be rich. Everybody would be healed. You're a lie. That's not true. You would deal with the same temptation of offense that they did. And I'm going to show you what fuels offense. Just, just follow me here. Just because you're hearing the word doesn't mean your life is going to change. I know many Christians who hear the word. They're still poor. They're still sick. They're still head over heels in debt. They're, their marriages are still falling apart. They're still depressed. They're still fearful. But they're going to church every Sunday. You know why? It, the word is not getting into the heart. And one of the main things that Satan uses for you is offense. Now watch this. Verse 1, Hebrews 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us. Notice God has left us promises. These promises cause us to rest, to live a restful, blessed life. But look at what he says. You can still come short of it. This is where the church is living predominantly. They're falling short of the promises of God. Verse two, for unto us, look at this. Unto us, the gospel was preached. They heard it as well as to them. But watch, the word preach did not profit them. It did not affect them. It didn't change them. It had no effect. This, if this verse isn't a picture of the church today, I don't know what is. The word had no effect on them, but they were hearing. They're going to Wednesday Bible study. They're going to Sunday service. They're tuning in but it was not changing their life. Why? Because it wasn't being mixed with faith, even though they heard it. So Romans 10, 17, what does it say? Faith comes by hearing. But then if you take this verse, Hebrews 4, it says they heard, but they still didn't have faith. So that, that's why people say, well, the Bible contradicts itself. It's not. The Bible stands on in the mouth of two. Every word has to be established. The Bible, every truth, has to be established by another truth. The potential for faith comes, but you still have to let it in. You have to mix it. And one of the things that the devil uses to keep you from mixing faith, to keep you from having faith, even though you're getting the word, he uses offense. Now, what fuels offense? This will really help you. What fuels offense? Go back to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. What fuels offense. We just want to lay this foundation so that you can benefit from the word. You can profit from the word. Is this helping? Uh, is this helping any of you? I, I pray that it's, it's helping you. All right, now watch this. Matthew 13. Look at this. Go back down. What fuels offense? Let's read it again. Verse 53. Verse 53. <clears throat> watch. Let's read the story. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. They're at church. Insomuch that they were, now look at this. They were hearing the word and they were completely astonished. They knew that this man had, look at what it says. How did he get this wisdom? They were completely astonished blown away and yet they still didn't have faith 
in so much that they were astonished and said, whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Now watch, look at this. Here's where the offense came in. Watch this. So they, man, if you could see what's happening, they're sitting that church front row, they're listening to the word. And they say, my God, this is a man. Look at that. Listen to what this man is saying. I've never seen the word come alive like this. And then instantly the devil shoots a thought. That's the carpenter's son. You know his mama. She's called Mary. Your son goes to t-ball practice with Joseph. Your other son plays on the same soccer team as Simon. And your first grade teacher you know Judas, he's in your class. This is a man. We know his sisters. They're in gymnastics with my daughters. And they turn one to another, sitting on the front row. They said, man, I just had the craziest thought. For a second, I thought this was actually the son of God. His dad works at the local factory. I know his sisters. It was crazy. I can't believe I thought that. The moment you hear the word, Satan's going to bring up, he's going to try to get you offended. He has to try to get you to shut your heart down. Because if you ever get the word in, you're going to profit. He doesn't want you. To, he comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He can't stop you from hearing but he can, he can try to create offense. Now watch this, verse 57. And they were offended at him. They were offended. Now Jesus did not do anything to them. They were offended. Jesus, it didn't say Jesus offended them. They were offended. And look at what Jesus did. Now here's what fuels offense, watch. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country. Now, what fuels offense? Let me say this to you. They heard the word and yet faith never came. Why not? Listen to me. Here's the fuel. Here's what makes offense work. They misunderstood him. Man, if you could get this, boy, I'm telling you, it changed your life. If you've never, if you're not profiting from the word of God, I'm showing you your problem. The reason they were offended at Jesus, it wasn't because Jesus did anything to them. Listen to me. They were offended because they misunderstood him. They only saw him, listen to me, as the carpenter's son, not a prophet. They misunderstood him. You know, I'm not big on um, titles. And, I'm, I'm, and what I'm getting ready to say needs to be taken with a grain of salt. But I'm not big on titles. I, I, my name is Jarrell. That's what my mama named me. That's who I am. Anytime I refer to myself ever, I always call myself Jarrell. I, that's me. I am Jarrell Cummings. I don't care what you call me. But you need to know where your heart is and why you say what you say. That's one aspect. Because if all, was he the carpenter's son? Yeah. Was he Joseph's brother? Yeah. Was his sister's, did he have all these? Yeah. Everything they said was true. But that wasn't all. Everything they said was true, but that wasn't the whole truth. He was the, a prophet. He was sent. When, when we say prophet, what did uh, 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 Second Chronicles say? Uh, listen to your prophets. Watch this. So shall you prosper. He was sent to prosper them. They didn't realize that. They did not see him as a gift from God. And this, I'm telling you, man, if you can get this, 
They did not wreck it. They misunderstood him. Offense is fueled. Offense finds its origin in misunderstanding. They heard what he said, and it offended them. They thought, who is he to talk to us like this? You are a carpenter, son. We know your brothers, and they, they misunderstood him. You know, I had my spiritual father tell me one day, he said, people, he, I never forget he told me this, man. He said, people are going to misunderstand you. And he said, people who are highly anointed always run the risk of being misunderstood. And Satan will use that against you. He will use it against you. So that verse 58 comes to pass in your life. You don't want verse 58 to come to pass, but it's in the Bible, meaning it is capable of coming to pass. Verse 58 says, why does he get you offended? Here's why. So he can stop the mighty power of God from working in your life. You'll, be, you'll come to church every Sunday, serve everything, listen. Even be astonished, like, man, you know, Jarrell has revelation. And yet, because of offense, because, let me say it this way. Because you might think, well, I'm not offended. Let me say it this way. Because of misunderstanding. He will, he, Satan will cut you off from experiencing the effect. Christ shall profit you nothing. Do you know that that's in the Bible? Galatians chapter four. It's possible for you to be a born again Christian and Jesus has no profit and he's not affecting your life at all. And you know what the source is? Offense. And you know what fuels offense? Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. He's a carpenter, son. We know his brothers, his sisters. Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm a prophet. I'm a gift from God. I was sent to prosper you. But since you don't believe, since you can't see who I am, you're okay. I'll, I'll keep moving on to the next group. So, yes, misunderstanding will lead them. Offense is actually. Off, so Lisa asked this question here. Does misunderstanding equal unbelief? Let me see the rest of it. Does misunderstanding equal unbelief or is that two different things? No. That's a great question. No, misunderstanding is what fuels offense. Once you're in offense, you will be in unbelief. You won't have faith. Even though the word's coming, it won't create faith in you. And without faith, he can do no mighty work in your life. You won't experience anything. And so you need to understand that. You need to understand that. Okay, now. Here's our last point for tonight. All you have to do to be healed is these three things. Three things to your healing. That's it. This, is, this will work every time. All you have to do to be healed are these three things. Number one, open your eyes. Number two, open your ears. Number three, open your heart. But that's the hardest three things in the world for most Christians to do. Because you're every per every single person that Jesus told to open their ears and to open their eyes, guess what? Their ears were opened. Their eyes were opened. But they were offended. It wasn't getting down. Open your ears. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. So they, they, they were hearing, but they weren't hearing. They were seeing, but they weren't seeing. All you have to do is open your eyes of the heart. Listen, if you have offense, 
You need to stop it because you're not going to, it's offense is like drinking poison, wishing someone else will die. You're not going to hurt anybody else. Jesus was totally fine. I can guarantee you he was fine. The people didn't experience God working mightily. He was fine. All you are going to do when you're offended is disconnect yourself. You're not hurting anybody but yourself. And you need to understand that. So these are the only three things you got to do. Open your ears, op open your eyes, and open your heart. Matthew 13, uh, verse 15. You're already in Matthew 13. Go back up to verse 15. We'll close here tonight. I'll give you two more verses. And then Thursday night, if you guys uh, want to keep going, um, give me a show of hands. How many of you want to want to want to keep going with this? If you'd like to go on Thursday night, give me a show of hands. If you don't want to, that's fine. But give me a show of hands on your screens. Put your those hands up on your screens so I can see them. Okay, I see you. I see you. All right, I see you. Great. I see you. See you. See you. I see you, Trudy. I see you, Jeff. I see you, Lisa, Lavelle, Ireland, Ovi, Annie, Stacy, Marvin, Jeff, uh, Scott. All right. Uh, Lavelle. Okay, I see you. Now watch this, guys. Look at this. Verse 15. All you have to do is open your eyes, open your ears, and open your heart. Just let the word in. That's all you have to do. The word is your medicine. It's like, you know, all of, those of you who have children, all, you know, if, if they're, you know, they're not feeling well, you give them some great medicine, you say, the hardest thing to do is get them to what? Open their mouth. But once they open their mouth, you just jam it in there, right? And close their mouth up, make them drink, put their head back and make them drink it. Because all you got to do is get the medicine in. Once it's in, they're going to get better. It's the same with the word of God. All you have to do is open up your spirit, your heart. Let the word in. The word is medicine. It'll, it will heal you. The hardest part for Christians is letting it in. They're like babies. Getting there, they want to close their mouth. They turn away, the the, the medicine sliding all over the side of their mouth, and then you know I got to come and kind of like clean it up and say, all right, now get it back in there, put your head back. But that that's my job. All right, now watch this. Matthew thirteen. Look at verse fifteen. Here's all you got to do to get healed. Watch this. Verse fifteen. For this people's heart is wax gross. Now you don't even know what that means. Wax gross. Here's what it means. It's hardened. It's hard. Most, most Christians have a hard heart. One day I'll teach on what a hard heart is. For the people's heart is hard. It's hard. Nothing gets in. Look at this. Why? Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes, they close them. Lest at any time they see with their eyes, hear with their ears. Number two, understand with their heart. Look at this, and I should heal them. There are many people who say, if God wanted to, he could have done this. Many of you think that way, whether you acknowledge it or not. Many of you think, well, if, you know, if God wanted to, God could do this. Why didn't you do this, God? You're God. If you wanted to, you could have kept that from happening. If you wanted to, you could have made this take place. That's not true. You believe a lie. That's completely wrong. That's not what the Bible teaches. You have authority. God cannot do anything in your life. Man, this is one of the most important statements you could ever learn. Listen to me. God cannot do any mighty work in your life without your consent and your cooperation. You have to believe, and neither can the devil. The devil cannot just run roughshod over you. You have to consent and cooperate. I'm not saying that you knowingly are doing it, but somehow, some way, if destruction is happening in your life, you are cooperating with the devil. You might not know how, but you are, okay? So he said, if they, if you oh, look at what he said, these are the only three things you got to do. Anytime, let, look at part B of Matthew 13, 15, part B. 
lest that any time, guess what? Any time could be right now for you. You can be healed anytime. I say, I say, you can be healed anytime. Anytime. Notice it's not up to God whether you're healed. It's up to you. Anytime you open your eyes, anytime you open your ears, anytime you choose to understand with your heart, not your head. Those of you who attend my ministry, you already know you can't try to understand this with your head. This stuff passes knowledge. It's the heart. You have to believe this stuff in the heart. <clears throat> But anytime you open your eye, anytime you open your ear, anytime you open your heart, he said, I will, I will now heal you, which means he couldn't do it before you responded correctly. That's why I say if you're sick, it's not because of God. It's something you're doing. There's something you're doing. And he's telling you, you're not opening your eyes. You're not opening your ear. You're not opening your heart. But if you do, he said, I will heal you. Proverbs chapter four, we have four minutes left. Proverbs four. So what we'll do on Thursday, since we got all this laid out, retain this information and keep it. And then we'll jump right in on Thursday to, to confess and speaking these verses of scripture. Faith is released by the words of your mouth. 2 Corinthians 4.13. We have the spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we speak. So all we're going to do, this, you know, all right, let me show you something. I'll go to Proverbs 4. Just go to Proverbs 4 real quick. Proverbs 4. Yes. Proverbs 4, look at this, verse 20. Okay, Proverbs 4, um, verse 20. All right. My son, my daughter too, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my, so, so number one, give me your attention. Now, you know what we do many times, and this is why I don't like the live stream so much, because it's so easy for you to lose your attention. But you have to pay attention. When you're, when you're receiving the word, you have to pay attention. My son, attend, pay attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. That's the ear. Somebody shout the ear. Let them not depart from your eyes. Somebody say the eye. Watch this. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Somebody shout the heart. Now watch this. Now what happens if you get the word? What happens, first of all, if you pay attention? And then you get the word into your eye, into your ear, meaning you have to look at the verse. Turn to it in your Bible. You look at it. You get it into your eye. Then you get it into your ear. How do you get it into your ear? By saying it. You say it. You look at the verse of script. This is what we do. This is, listen, I've seen, I have an aunt who is paralyzed. She was instantly healed. I don't always see everybody instantly healed. Sometimes I don't. This, anytime I give somebody the word like I'm doing with you right now, they always get healed. This is the most surefire way that I know to get a person healed. Prayer doesn't always work. Well, all right, let me say it like this. Prayer doesn't always work because prayer only works when you believe. And there are many Christians who they don't realize it, but they're not believing. So even though you're praying for them, they might even be in church, but their heart is hard. They don't even, I'm not saying that they're bad people, but the prayer can't get to them. It's not uh, affecting them. But the word, if they'll take the word and you stick with them, then you can open their heart gradually and get the word in there and get that medicine that's running down their face. 
slip it back up into their mouth and get them healed. So I always like to go the way of the word. I've never had a person that I've sat with with the word and they received. Never had a person not get healed. Never. This is the this is the this is the way we do in our house. This is how we get healed. My wife isn't paying attention. Are you looking at me or no? All right. Now watch this. Proverbs chapter four. Look at this. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now what happens once you get the word into your eyes and into your ears you look at the verse you don't let it depart from your eyes then you say it out loud you hear yourself say it faith comes by hearing didn't say who you had to hear it from it just said faith comes by hearing you can say it you say it so your ear can hear it what happens when you do that it gets into your heart what happens once the word gets into your heart it's like medicine getting into that baby's mouth look It'll be life and health to some of your flesh. Is that what it said? No. All, meaning any sickness, all sickness, I don't care how severe they are, all mental sicknesses, physical sicknesses, uh, emotional sicknesses, all of your physical body, the flesh, will become healthy. But you got to get it off of your cheek, running down your neck, on your bib, and you got to get it into your mouth. And then he says this, verse 23, keep your heart, meaning protect it, with all diligence. Why? Why do you need to be diligent in protecting your heart? Because out of your heart come the issues of life. Listen to me. I'm going to say a statement here, and I never want you to forget this, okay? I'm going to say this statement, and if you can get this statement, your, I can guarantee you your life will change if you can understand what I'm getting ready to tell you. Listen to me closely. Life does not happen to you. Life comes from you, whatever issue, whether it's positive or negative, whatever issue is in your life right now, be it sickness or health, be it poverty or wealth, be it joy or depression, I don't care what the issue is, wherever you are right now in life, it came from your heart. It did not happen to you. The devil didn't make it happen to you. It's not because you're black or because you're a female or because you're older. Whatever is happening to you, it's, it came from you. It was in you. If you're sick, it's because sickness is in you. If you're poor, it's because somewhere there is poverty mentality in you. If you're depressed, somewhere there's depression in you. And we'll teach on all this stuff later, but it, it's, it's, you, it's in your heart. It cannot happen. Not, there, oh, my goodness. You can, there can be no issue in your life except it came out of your heart. It's impossible. Nothing. Yeah, I see that, Kevin. You got it. Nothing. There is no issue. In your life today, March 6, 2023, at 9.20 p.m., there is no issue in your life today that, that did not come out of you. It is in you somewhere, and maybe you need to pray like David, Lord, search my heart. Help me see these seeds that are producing these fruits in my life, but it's in you. It comes from you. It's in you. All right, so, so starting Thursday, we're going to get the word into our heart. How do you get the word into your heart? This is our last verse. How do you get the word into your heart? Psalm 45. How do you get the word to get into your heart? Because remember, if we get it into our heart, what will happen to all of our flesh? All of our flesh will become what? Healthy. Proverbs 4.23. All of our flesh will become what? Healthy, but it has to first get into your heart. 
How do you get the word into your heart? Watch this. Psalm 45, verse 1. Look at this. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready, what? Writer. Notice what he said. Your tongue is a pen and it writes. How do you write God's word in your heart? You speak it. Look at Proverbs 7, verse 3. Proverbs 7, verse 3. Look at this. Proverbs 7, verse 3. Proverbs 7, verse 3. Bind them, talking about God's word. Go back to verse 1. Look at verse 1. Proverbs 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words. What's the subject? The word of God. Keep it. How do you keep it? Remember, he said, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep the word in your heart. How do you keep the word? How do you get it in your heart? Watch verse one. My son, keep my words. Lay up my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and you will live. Keep my word, my law as the apple of your eye. Bind it on your finger. Watch this. Write my words on the table of your heart. How do you write God's word on your heart? Psalm 45, verse 1, your tongue is a pen of a ready writer. How do you write the word in your heart? You speak it. And when you speak God's word, you're writing on your heart. And once you write it in the heart, it'll be health instantly. It'll start producing health for all. Your eyesight is part of your flesh. For all of your flesh, your eyes will become healthy. All right? So next, I mean, so this Thursday, um, I'll, I'll send you guys out. I'll just use the same email that I, the same one that I used today. I'll copy all these emails. And if you guys think of anybody else, just text me and I'll write and I'll send them the email as well. But Thursday, what, uh, will you send the recording? Yes, I will. I'll send the recording to you guys probably tomorrow. So I'll send you guys the recording. Um, so you'll have the recording and then I'll send you all the recordings going forward. So Thursday, I'm going to start. I have about 30 of these. I'm going to also email you these scriptures so that you have them so you can follow with me. Um, please add. Okay. All right. I'll add you. So Thursday, I got you, Kevin. So Thursday, um, I'm going to uh, give you these verses of scripture and we're going to say them together and you're going to write it on your heart. And once you write it on your heart, it's all over but the shouting. Everything's done. You gave the child the medicine. It, it'll, it's going to work. The word, I, I meant to show you that verse. But in Proverbs 4.20, it says the word will be health to all your flesh. The word health there is the, in Proverbs 4.24, the word health there is the Hebrew word marpe, M-A-R-P-E. It's literally the word medicine. Medicine. God's word is medicine. Get it into your heart, the mouth, the heart. It'll produce health, okay? All right, guys. I love you guys. I'm very, very, very pleased and encouraged to see that you guys are, are, are pursuing the promises of God.